So some challenges to project management include breaking down complex tasks, prioritizing multiple deadlines, working with several collaborators, maintaining a team's motivation, navigating long-term goals, and keeping stakeholders informed. Uh, you may have managed these kinds of challenges before, and if you've taken our other workshop, uh, you may have already developed strategies using digital tools like project plans and shared drive folders. Today though, uh, we're gonna focus mostly on tracking a project while you're actually working on it. So tracking a project is a major part of making it successful. If you're working on a long-term project with a team, you might already have a good idea of your goals, or your milestones and deliverables. So let's talk about one of the most important phases of project management, tracking your progress. To track a project, you ask, uh, what are the tasks that need to get done? Uh, by when, right? And who is in charge of these tasks? First, I'll open a basic project tracker, uh, like the one you might already have in progress. The image on this side shows a completed project tracking spreadsheet. Uh, next, I'll show you some spreadsheet tools you can use to manage a project, uh, including linking relevant resources to your spreadsheet, uh, sorting and filtering the spreadsheet to help you easily find information you need, uh, even creating drop-down lists with uh, using data val validation, uh, applying conditional formatting to color code the status of your tasks, uh, and even collaborating with your team. So the image on the right actually shows a computer screen containing a basic project tracker uh, that, that contains categories for tasks, status, start and due dates, some notes, and uh, completion field. Uh, to use the skills um, I demonstrate today, you should start from a project tracker you already have in progress, like this one you see here. Uh, but if you don't already have a tracker, uh, feel free to just follow along and apply these skills uh, and concepts later on. To get started, you would open your project tracker and review the categories in the first row of your spreadsheet, uh, or the row that basically contains our headings. Uh, this spreadsheet includes some basic categories. So like I said before, we have our task, uh, status, which is simply the progress of those tasks, the date the task started, the date the task is actually due, uh, the owner of the tasks, so who is the person who's actually responsible for that task, uh, a column for notes to record that additional information related to each task, and a column that shows when the task is complete. Simple checkbox. These categories are the major aspects of your project uh, that you will update and track. You may have already started to fill in the sheet with tasks and other relevant details. Um, I'll talk you through the process briefly now uh, in case you're starting from the beginning. All right, so as you move forward with your project, you fill your spreadsheet with the uh, information you need to manage. Uh, the image on the right actually shows a project tracker with information that's typed in. A list at least five tasks, right? They need to be completed for this project to meet its goals. Uh, listing these tasks can help you break your project into large components. Uh, and then you can take those and break those into smaller ones. Uh, then make your tracker more specific. Enter the name of the task owners, remember the person that's responsible for each task, uh, and each appropriate column. Now you can use this column to keep track of the task you're assigned and easily gauge how much work each team, team member has to do. So you can actually kind of balance a load by seeing someone's name too many times. Uh, finally, list at least a few, a couple few dates, right? You can re record the date, when you start the task and when you plan to finish it. And of course, these can always be changed as you are adjusting accordingly. First, let's sort the spreadsheet <clears throat> by person to see what everyone is working on. Uh, you would simply select a whole column, uh, now select data from the menu, and then select sort. And you can sort the sheet A to Z. Uh, this rearranges the rows by person in alphabetical order uh, so that you can see each team member task all together. The animation on this slide shows a user sorting the spreadsheet by owner. Uh, they select the column that contains the task owners, uh, then they use the data menu to sort the spreadsheet. You can use sorting to quickly see all kinds of information. For example, if you wanted to see the tasks that are due soonest, you can sort the spreadsheet by due date. Or you could sort based on the priority of the task. So if you had a column for priority, you could sort the sheet to see which tasks are most important. Now, sorting can be handy if you're okay with looking at everything in numerical or alphabetical order, uh, but you may want to isolate a particular piece of information. Uh, and in order to do this, you would actually use a filter. A filter is a tool that you can use to simplify your spreadsheet uh, and just 
to view just the information you want to see. For example, you can actually add a filter to see only the tasks that belong to a team member, not all the team members in alphabetical order. Uh, to do this, you would select the data menu uh, and then create a filter. The animation on the slide shows a user creating a new filter for task owners. Uh, they select the owner column and use data menu and then create a filter. To use the filter, decide on which information to show. For example, select only your name to see the tasks that belong to you. The filter temporarily removes tasks that do not meet this condition uh, from your view. The animation on the slide shows a user applying a filter to see only their tasks. The user opens the filter, selects their name, in this case, Yara, uh, and filters the spreadsheet. In this sample tracker, we'll create a drop-down menu that allows you to easily select the progress of a task. Uh, the image on this slide shows a spreadsheet tracker. Uh, and in the status column, the user has added a drop-down menu showing different options uh, to mark the task statuses. Uh, you can create one of these yourself by using the data validation function. So to add a status update drop-down list, uh, you want to add a new column for status. Uh, and this animation on the right shows the user adding a new column and then labeling it status. Uh, if you want to, you can totally delete the complete checkboxes since this new status column will contain the same kind of information. We don't really need the duplicate information. So we can get rid of that if you want, or you can keep it. Next, select the cells in the status column uh, down to the bottom of your task list. And then open the data menu and then choose data validation. Notice that the cell range you highlighted appears in the box. Uh, these cells are, are where your drop-down list will appear. The animation on the slide shows a user selecting the cells in the status column uh, where their drop-down list should appear. Uh, and then they open the data menu and then start adding data validation. Next, decide on what options should appear in your lists. So choose list of items, this is important, from the criteria menu. Then <clears throat> type in terms that will appear in your drop-down menu. In this case, we'll use some basic terms, just like in the, in the animation here, uh, to describe the status of the task. So not started, in progress, paused, needs attention, and complete. Make sure that you separate the items in the list with commas. If you don't do that, they're all just, you'll have a single choice for all those in just one word. I won't look right. So separate each item, item with a comma. To finish your list, make sure you, um, the show dropdown list and cell box is checked, right? Uh, and then save the data validation. The project tracker now has a dropdown menu in each of the cells of the owner column. The animation on this slide actually shows the user saving the data validation list, uh, then select the dropdown menu next to the task and mark it to complete. So when you're working with multiple collaborators on many tasks, you might also use a tool called conditional formatting. Uh, you can use conditional formatting to add color to certain cells. Uh, for example, you might want to change the completed items <clears throat> to green um, and any tasks that are held up that need to be reviewed uh, in red. Conditional formatting changes the color or fat formatting in a cell uh, if the contents of that cell matches a particular criteria. Now you can think of conditional formatting like an if then sentence, right? So if the cell contains certain information, then the spreadsheet will change the formatting of the cell. Uh, for this example, let's say if the task is complete, change the fill color to green. Okay, so first you need to select the status column. Right? So select format after that, and then conditional formatting. The cells you highlighted will show up in the box as the range. Uh, the range is a group of cells that will change. Uh, the animation on this slide shows a user selecting the status column uh, and then opening format menu to begin adding conditional formatting. Next, we want to create the if part of the statement. We want to change the format if the cell says complete, right? So choose text contains from the drop-down menu and then below that type complete. Now make sure when you type in complete, you type it, uh, you spell it right. Because this is probably one of the biggest issues people run into. They either type it wrong or in the drop-down menu or they type it wrong in their, their, their conditional formatting. Uh, so make sure those match. Uh, and so don't put like complete and completed. You're not going to get a match. Uh, under formatting style, choose a color to go with the status. Green usually means go, right, or done. Uh, but use whatever color you like. 
Uh, the animation on the slide shows a user taking the steps to create uh, conditional formatting using rules uh, and then adding a color code. To start collaborating digitally with your team, give them access to important files. You can share it a Google document, spreadsheet, or presentation with other people, and then you can choose how much they can do with it. Uh, the image on the slide shows the share dialogue uh, that allows users to grant different levels of access to their colleagues. Uh, there's viewer, editor, and comment. Uh, if you want them to only see the progress of the project, you might give them view access. Uh, investors and stakeholders uh, may only need to be able to see and add comments. Uh, if you want a teammates to update a sheet with their progress, they may need edit access. So when you share a document, you and your team can collaborate digitally at the same time. This is an important thing to kind of note. So they can actually open and work on the spreadsheet on their own computer and device. Uh, and then you can also open it up in your device and make edits at the same time from anywhere around the world. Another way you might collaborate with your team is to add a comment uh, to include someone in a conversation. For example, you should uh, ask team members how long they think a task will take, uh, and they can let you know if they encounter any problems along the way. <clears throat> the animation on this slide shows a user adding a comment into one cell in the spreadsheet. Let's say one of the tasks is close to its due date. Imagine you want to check in with the task owner to see whether it's on track. Uh, so you can simply select the cell that contains a due date, insert a comment, uh, and then write a short reminder or question about that task and then click comment. Uh, so when you add a comment, you also uh, can also designate someone on your team as the, the actual specific owner of that issue. Uh, to do this, you would type the plus symbol uh, and then add their email address. And you can ask for an update or if you have a specific task that you um, or your teammate are, need to do, you can mark your comments uh, as an action item. So as opposed to just making the comment, when you plus them in, you'll have the ability to make it an action item by clicking assign. Uh, the person will receive an email with their comment and they will be responsible for completing the task and marking it as complete. The animation on the right actually shows the user selecting the cell in the spreadsheet tracker. Uh, they enter the comment, they type a short message and mention a teammate. Uh, then they assign the comment to that teammate. And this is a quick way to flag an outstanding task or ask for a quick report or remind your team members of something they need to do. Uh, you don't have to write a whole email or call them. Uh, just simply select the text and then add the comment. They can visit the spreadsheet or even write back if they, write back if they want to. Plussing someone in into a comment in a project tracker is also one way you can give your team's input uh, on an overall goal. Uh, and you can also use this feature in other Google Apps like Google Docs, uh, if you want to, you know, to work collaboratively with a big group of people. Uh, you can communicate regularly with the team to unblock them or just to make sure they're not hung up on a particular challenge. Uh, and then also let them know any important changes that have been made to the project goals or processes. And remember, checking in with your team, even if it's briefly, can help you anticipate any possible challenges uh, and adjust your schedule accordingly.